it's uh it's like it's like making smacking noises like it's like it's like it's like it's the buckwoods episode two and of course edward is going to do his podcast ritual start everything off you know what i mean i can't say that i blame the man funny that you kind of cued into that being a ritual for me because it's not like i vocalize that no just a uh intuitive guy the, I just, bro, have you seen the video of Tom Brady making his son like kiss him on the mouth? <laughs> I didn't. See, he didn't. I saw him do it at a football game, but he didn't make no, him. No, no. I was just like, crib. no. It was I didn't the most disturbing shit I've seen in a very long time, Edward. Like, first of all, Tom Brady is very Mormon. And his kid is, like, basically trying to get on his fantasy football, right? And he obviously is, like, not allowed to get on the computer or, like, have internet access, it seems like. And, well, that's besides the point. But he was like, can I uh, get on fantasy football or some shit? And he was like, would you trade me somebody for somebody? And he was like, what do I get? And he was like, I mean, what do you want? And he was like, Come here and give me a kiss. So he like goes over. So the kid goes over like reluctantly as hell. He's like walking over like. <laughs> and like get a little kiss, right? And then he starts walking away. And, he, and then Tom Brady goes, that was just a pet. Come back here. <laughs> oh. oh. What the fuck? It literally made him kiss him for like a solid five seconds, and the kid's just like this. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, eyes bro. open. Yeah, he's just like, bro, I just want this shit to end. Like, I just wanted Cam Newton on my fantasy team, bro. Oh, man. Jesus. Like, it was so, so disturbing, gross. dude. Like, absolutely disturbing. Oh, fuck. Ugh. I don't know what to say. I, there's nothing to say about that. <laughs> okay, okay, but what we can speechless. do what we can do is compare it to this other super disturbing story. Okay, can so I get another this... beer first? Let me I need I need another beer if I'm gonna listen to this shit. <laughs> Bruh. Listen, dude. So there's okay. this high school. It's I I want to say it's like a pep rally maybe pep rally for like the football players right okay pep rally and for the football players so so they've got all the football players blindfolded and they're like all right, all right. we're gonna that have already sounds weird we're gonna have these girls come out right oh and... no I saw this one <laughs> oh dude no it was the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Bro, I, I gotta finish telling it though. Just, oh god. I gotta finish telling it. So they they come out. They go, we got some girls here. You gotta, you what know, the fuck. We got some girls here to, you know, get you piped up for the game. You know, they're gonna give you, they're gonna kiss you. You're gonna rate their kiss, whatever, blah blah. blah. And they bring out their fucking parents, their moms, dude. Their dads, I'm talking about like cheerleaders were kissing dads, football players were kissing moms, and I'm talking about like for solid like makeout sessions and like t- touching ass, bro. Touching ass of your parents, like while you hook up with them in front of everyone in school. I bet every kid in Dude. that situation killed themselves. <laughs> I, I would probably consider it. Yeah, on yeah. God. Like, and they that are and like so bad, bro. It's awful. And I would and, have to go to therapy after that. Oh, for, for sure. Fact. And the thing is, after it happened, everybody's just laughing it off, like, "Oh, what a good prank!" Like, dude, you know what? You know, one of those kids didn't think it was their parent, and they probably got aroused. No, on it, that's the whole. That's what makes it even creepier, bro. Because, like, one mom literally took her all... son's hand and yeah. put it on her ass. Oh, I thought you were going to say took it off. 
No, put it on it. Ah, uh, dude. No, I saw one where the son just straight up grabbed his mom's ass, and I was like, oh, no, he's, like, into it. And then, like, his mom, no, like, had to right. take his hand off. I was just like, what are y'all doing? Why, as a parent, what in the fuck? Why would you think that's okay? Fucking white people, dude. That is some, like... And if you notice, it's an all-white school. <laughs> dude, is it... Is that pedophilia? Like, I don't know what to say. It's fucking incest. That's just so... Yeah, that, that is what that is. It's <laughs> so weird. It it's just... just it's more it than makes, weird. It's not okay. It's more than weird. It's it's problematic. It's, it's crazy weird. that the school condoned it. It was like this would be a great prank. Bro, Let's all film it. That's what I'm saying. And they they, like, they filmed incest, bro. Literally, and they like encourage them to go further with it, like. Yeah, like that. No, it got like sexual with the video. I was like, "What the fuck?" Bruh, when I watched it, I was like, "Was that like, was that like an act? Were they all actors? Is there like some kicker here that I'm missing, or is this shit real?" Like, I didn't want to believe it. And then it was real as fuck. Yeah, I like. Ah, oh, dude, I I thought I forgot that shit till you just brought it up. That was just. I mean, that's the worst of social media. I I don't know what that was motivated by. Like, what was the thought? Like, we'll go viral for what? No, see, that was before, like, viral was even a thing, I would be my guess. Like, oh, so they were just like, this is harmless fun. Let's do no, it. No, yeah, for- they, they definitely thought it was, like, just funny. A good, little, good little prank. <laughs> Where where was the school? That's my next question. What state? I have no idea, but they were all white. No, yeah. That stood out to me at the time, too. But there was one dad that was like, no, I, had, had to kiss his that, daughter. And his face afterwards, he was just like, why did I do that? Dude, I would never. That should have been every parent's face. That's the thing. They no, even did so, it. Most of them were like, oh, like, I got you. Like, yeah. Like, no. Yeah. You're my I would mother. Literally, I would never see my parent again if that happened. I would, I would run away <laughs> on no, the yeah, spot. Like, I would run away. I would girl, get a like, fucking nap sack <laughs> and slap that shit over my shoulder just like a movie. I'd be like, what is life now? I got a nap sack and I'd fucking. I'd run away. I'd probably just walk straight off a cliff. Run into I'd a just homeless walk... run into a homeless guy on the fucking the train and just he, he's like, what just like, hey, what'd you run away for? Well what'd you run away pep for? Rally. It was just pep rally. You see, it's you just know? like a lost boys. <laughs> exactly. Away, no, no, left. no. I'm thinking like more like a grungy, like old hobo. It's like, you know, a vet in the game. He's probably been on this train for like, you know, months uh, and yeah, months. He's got some he's got some scruff. He's got an old army surplus. Exactly. Jacket on. Exactly. Camo I'm hat, with maybe. You. So and then meanwhile, you have this meek teenager just sitting exactly. there. Just... <laughs> Like, and I'm talking about, like, bare baby face, like, yeah. clean cut, and, like, a polo and, like, khakis with, like, just yeah. a satchel. So and then you just, got... And the guy's just like, hey, buddy, it doesn't look like you got it too bad. What are you, what are you trying to get away from? Well, yeah. it all started at the senior pep rally when they decided I was going to kiss my mom. He was like, oh, <laughs> damn, that sounds pretty bad. And I was just addicted to heroin. <laughs> he'd probably offer him some just be like you need this <laughs> the guy would probably be like yeah just give me enough to kill me <laughs> I was gonna do this tonight but you need it I'll sacrifice my addiction <laughs> I realize now like I get I'm such an angry person on a normal day to day basis like I don't know what I'd be like without weed. I'd probably smoke cigarettes. 
I, I would need something. I mean, I do both. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would just need something to like, like elevate my mood for a smidgen of time. That would probably, for some people, that probably looks like coffee. I mean, for sure. I'm sure everybody has different things, but like, I'm realizing like whether it's whether it's one thing. If I lose that, it'll probably be another. It's just. Oh yeah, you replace every addiction with something else. Yeah, it's like I don't know. I think maybe I have an oral fixation. Does that make sense? Kind of weird. <laughs> no, it's like it's like, it's like yeah, there's some psychological problem. <laughs> no, I don't mean it like that. I just mean every now and then I, I go through periods where I'm like I always have to like be chewing a piece of gum, or always have to have a drink on hand, always have to like be smoking something or eating something. It's that's what I mean. I don't know if, if that's the same classification as an oral fixation, but it's like I'd say it fits. <laughs> yeah, it it turns into like like a distraction, I guess, if you're chewing gum or something. It yeah, does get should, really repetitive. Uh, you should read up on Sigmund Freud's <laughs> ideas on that. No, nah, because he's going to be like, it secretly means I want to suck a dick or something. <laughs> like, it secretly means you like want your mom. Oh, that's what that means? Yeah, it's all like subtext. It's one of, it's it's gonna one be of, like, it's one of them. Yeah, I feel like he, he watches somebody and he'd be like, well, if you like bananas, maybe that means you like something else. And they'd just be like, fuck you, dude. I like bananas. Like, fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm, I might be lying. I, it's like a stimulus addiction. It's like I always need something going on to entertain myself. So it's like I always have to have either like music playing or if it's silent, then I have to be chewing gum or something weird. Like it's just it's never like I want to just sit in pure deadness. I mean, I feel like that's kind of everybody, though. And then working, you're just limited to not as many options for entertainment. And like, you know, you kind of have to, I guess those are my strategies for coping with boredom, chewing gum. That's a, that's kind of boring too. <laughs> Part of me hopes it'll make my like teeth whiter, but I don't know that it actually does that. It does not. So I'm just like pretty much getting a sore jaw. Cause that's the only thing that ever happens is I chew gum for like an hour and then I'm like, God, why did I do that? <laughs> oh my jaw hurts. You just popped a molly or some shit. Yeah. And then I'm walking around the rest of the day with a sore jaw. But I swear to God, in five years, this gum habit's really going to pay off. I'm going to have a Brad Pitt <laughs> jawline. <laughs> Like them e boys out here doing TikToks at forty five, dude. I'll straight up cut a piece of wood with my jaw, straight chopping wood. Don't worry, babe. I got the fire. I just oh, go no. out with my jawline. This is just chiseled by Michelangelo himself. <laughs> Actually, more exactly. like by Trident itself. Yeah, <laughs> oh, the great, the great Poseidon's Trident. <laughs> But so um, recently, I went out of the house, dude. This is big news. I, I went out for the first time in months, and it was the exact same as it always is. And you were like, yeah, it's still shitty. <laughs> I was just like, bro, man, I am really getting too old for this, bro. Like, this shit. And it's funny because I was like, I was just screwing with people. I was literally, I pretended that I was a, uh, like, a professional vlogger. So I just had my phone out and I was just videotaping everybody. And it was just really funny because, like, you could, like, tell. It was almost like a psychological experiment because you could, like, tell which people were, like, oh, I want the fame, I want to be noticed. And then the other people that were like, bruh, I'm not trying to be on camera. But I mean, most of them just yeah. didn't like, most of them just didn't like the flash because it was at night. Yeah, I mean, I probably would never put flash in someone's face. That's kind of, 
That's obtrusive. I mean, I just did it as a troll. <laughs> Fuck up. What was I was gonna say. Sorry, I just solved the crime, but I know. let's get back to what you were saying. Oh, what I was saying about the pedophilia shit, like on Facebook, about how everybody is like about the whole pedophilia ring and all that shit. Yeah, it's just it's so far out of nowhere. Oh, there's people talking about a ring. Yeah, yeah, like the Epstein's and like. All that shit. You still don't know who Jeffrey Epstein is? No, I definitely know who he is. He's dead. Oh. Okay, well, his mistress is not, and they just released her documents. Oh, what's her documents? Uh, A bunch of fucking, well, very explicit things, but also, like, you know, incriminating shit to very powerful people, like Bill Clinton getting a massage from one of the victims that came out in the Epstein case. What kind of massage? When you say, are you using that as like a euphemism for like a hand job? No, just a real massage. <laughs> but oh. he d- he just creepy. Al- he just still creepy. Always, yeah, no, regardless, creepy. But he always claimed that he was never a part of that shit and whatnot. I don't know, dude, but there's yeah. like there there's some shit online that's just like what the figgity fuck. Yeah, but I like, try not to look at like that conspir the conspiracy stuff though, just because it's I feel like that's where a lot of that stuff's starting to come from, and it's not all related to that. It's just people just like just like reading conspiracy shit because I feel like some of it's like out of left field almost. I mean, no, most of it is, but I'm saying there's so many people saying it that, like, it's almost to the point where it is going to have to be recognized at some point. Yeah, there's a literal Save the Children Foundation that nobody's actually talking about in the midst of this hashtag. You know, created it. Well, it was around long before this hashtag was. I don't know who created it, but I did. I looked that up, and I was like, "Oh, there's an actual like thing you can donate to that is working to stop child trafficking." No, nobody ever posts the link. But yeah, sure. Because it's not nobody's actually. I don't know, man. There's also, I mean, BLM also has its own like charity website. But I almost don't want to donate because I can't figure out whether they're donating to. And I'd rather just donate directly to something oh, than yeah, like no, have some direct third source. party, yeah, yeah, third party disperse my donations in some and, trivial and take, manner. And take I don't half know about. of it, yeah, yeah. Like I was like, I'll just find the party, the right place to do it. Like we got plenty of local things. Oh. I'm- my cousin is sponsored by Coors Light, so if you would like to. Coors Light, huh? Well. Well, we can go Post Malone route, too, I guess. Speaking of Post Malone, that motherfucker's on Joe Rogan talking about aliens for about an hour and a half. Boy, you seen how long that podcast was? Three yeah. hours. Do you think he cuts those podcasts, right? I don't know. Because I don't think he runs them raw all the way. No, no, no. I mean, well, not all the way. There's definitely, like, some. That means cutting. he records forever to get some content. Because you know they split all of that into sizable bits. Well, yeah, and they were both on stream, oh, wow. so they were probably just talking for, like, 12 hours. That's what we need to do for a podcast. Streams. I'm not exactly a fan, but... I'll manage. <laughs> but Fair enough. I feel like we would we might get to to uh extraterrestrial, not extraterrestrial, existential. Is that the right word? It's all good, man. We're gonna have a lot of podcasts. Maybe someone finds it and likes it. Yeah, I mean who knows? Who Gotta knows? Be man? Diverse. Who knows? Gotta be diverse. Yeah, we're the most diverse podcast ever. Two white guys. 
from the suburbs. Amen. Amen. We can be by diverse in opinion. Oh no! Well, that's for damn sure. There's a lot of people. I feel like subscribe to to like all right. I'm a conservative, so I'm going to subscribe to everything that is right sided. No, I agree and, with all of it. Well, they're just trying to verify their own opinion within their head. So they'll read whatever verifies that, which is why so many people have these fucking dumbass opinions because half of these conservative sites are fucking just way fucking batshit crazy. You know, who, all right, name, if you were, if you, growing up, right, so like from let's say from like thirteen to seventeen, who would you say your celebrity crush was? What did you say? What was the age range? Thirteen to seventeen, like high school. Okay, thirteen to seventeen, my celebrity crush. Oh come on, man! You know this answer. I don't know. Don't you? I'm, I'm hoping it's the one I want it to be, but I'm not sure. Oh, dude, my celebrity crush from 13 to 17 was Miley Cyrus, all the way. Oh, fuck it out of here, Ed. Dude, Miley Cyrus. Oh, I, I've had a crush on her since I was, since the beginning of Hannah Montana. Since all I right. was like in third grade. Four, okay, well, whenever it I started. Want, I want you, I want you to think. I'm going to give you three clues, okay? Shia LaBeouf. Call you like Shia. Megan Fox. <laughs> <laughs> See, I you already knew that. One. But Dude, bro, you, just, you always watch Jennifer's Body and shit. Bro, oh my. That's a good ass movie. I haven't seen it still. Bro, it's just like, it's insane that a picture of a girl holding a fucking lighter on her tongue with the flame just like going on forever and that image is just going on forever like that image will never die you know that you don't even know i'm talking about iconic you're talking yeah when she did this in the movie i'm just kidding what if i just did that though bro if you would have done it for like a solid five seconds i would have been impressed you know like holy shit you're her well, no, definitely not, because, I mean, you'll never be a Megan fucking fuck <laughs> Some girl out there would just be like, oh, my God, he's so hot. <laughs> Bruh. Beforehand, you could be goofy, and you know that it would just be lost in everybody's memory eventually. Like, they would just eventually forget it with time. Yeah. Now, we got documentation yeah, that bro. I'm not worried about other people seeing I'm worried about me looking back on <laughs> oh but going, I mean that's everybody Ooh. yeah that's I mean I still I already like, know it's gonna happen I look back I mean I still have like soldier boy dance videos on my Facebook so you know I look back at that shit and I'm like good lord yeah I remember that I, I remember thinking that in the same moment y'all made that that was like some super cultural appropriation shit too. I had like my fucking oh my God. pants down to my shins and like a huge ass white tee and a sideways fitted cap. It and was... I was just like, you bitch. Oh man, I remember watching it when I was what that was like elementary or middle school. And I was just like, what in the world? Because <laughs> yeah. also Robert was doing it, which it was even weirder. And, and I was just like, like what? twice my size. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> we had videos for every crank that. And, but I was and, also and like, low I'm key, not... Edward was a crank that SpongeBob fucking Olympian. Oh, yeah, I remember that dance. That was basically somehow like an Irish jig turned into a. Oh, yeah. Turned into whatever that it, was. It was like, it was the. It was the dance made for you. Like it was the widest possible dance. It's the only one that it was the only one I'd ever be able to do. <laughs> yeah, like oh god, bro, because it really requires no rhythm. Because you literally just start fucking going so fast that 
yeah you, there's there's no like measure to the beat at all it's just now watch my legs exactly watch my silly legs and if you don't know what crank that spongebob is look it up get cultured some old social boy shit I'll, I'll go down the street blasting some in sync, man. This baby, bye bye bye. There ain't no lie. I roll my window down, look at a girl <laughs> with my racing stripes, and then I roll it back up and speed off. Just see, I, I, take, the, <laughs> I take the opposite approach. I pull up playing some old Nirvana, and I'm like, Throw it on the window, you know what I'm saying? Maybe bust one little tear, look at Shoddy, and be like, and then she gonna get in the car and be like, I need to comfort this man. You know, Shoddy, you know, girls love a man that they can fix. They love fixing shit. So that's the problem, though. I'd good. be like, why are you crying? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm good. That's, what, that's what would really happen. She'd be like, is something okay? Do I know you? Why are you crying? I've been like, listen, I'm crying because I've never seen something so beautiful as yourself. But but in in the real in the realistic situation of what in I in the realistic do, situation, I'm actually depressed as fuck listening to Kurt Cobain talking about the voices in his head being his only friend. <laughs> well, that is kind of creepy, also. Kurt Cobain sat in a lot of rooms alone on a lot of drugs. And I think if I had to say anything, it probably didn't help. Well, I don't think that would help anybody. Nope. <laughs> I like the clout goggles. Yeah. Those are because of Kurt Cobain. Yeah, I know. I know. He's a little clout goggle. It's just crazy, man. Shit's influential as fuck. Well. It's just so sad that all these. But I feel like you're you're missing that. you're missing a lot of credit that goes to somebody much bigger than Kurt Cobain in the cool glasses department. To be honest, I mean, you miss, I, I didn't know why. We just just think that. think a little harder than who could possibly start cloud goggles. Just a little harder. Not, it might not be him. To, I'm not about to say you. I know that. No, I wouldn't take that credit, obviously. Bro, nobody started Cloud Goggles before Kirk. Come Obama, on, man. Know. Come Fucking on, man. Willie Wonka. Um, no, come on. You're better than that. He's great. Some may say he's the best pianist ever. Okay, I don't know if people are actually saying that. I might have just made that up to hype him up. Some may say he's a rocket Wonder? man. No. Elton John? Yeah. Elton, Elton John, John did not have clout goggles, bitch. He just had a big ass square frame. Did same. he not? Did he not? I mean, I guess you could we can you could make that argument. I feel like I could find some on him. I feel like I could. Yeah, but could you find some on him before Kirk Cobain? Probably. Or? Probably. Well, you know, long get back Elton's to me on that around. information. And you know what? I've seen Elton John in concert. It was crazy. I got beer spilled on my head. Great concert. Yeah. Stung my eyes. Hurt oh, really oh. bad. It was a really great concert. <laughs> really great. Only real. Well, I've had two concert experiences. My One was the Drake concert, which was so fucking fire. And that was like, just when he released Thank Me Later. Or no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. No, no, no. What's the one where he's sitting with the table with the gold chalice? Oh, my God. Fucking. It's got Take a Shot for Me on it. And I know which one you're talking about, but I don't know what one that is. It's got Hell Yeah fucking Ride on it. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Anyways, Ooh. that album, he's in Tallahassee. Take care. Take care, indeed. Civic Center, shit's lit. Guess who opens for him? Fucking Kendrick Lamar and ASAP Rocky. What in the fuck? That was the most fire concert I've ever seen. I got to see two 
artists basically for free that turned out to be two of the most influential artists of our generation and then see the most influential artist of our generation in one night. The other Pretty. concert was a Jason Aldean concert and I wanted to shoot myself in the face. Those are the only two concerts you've been to? Uh, T-Pain concert for UWF Homecoming. Oh, so more than those. Those were just your two favorites? Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Jason Aldean? not my favorite. <laughs> I said it was just one of them. Okay. And I but it was, went... it was your top. No, it was not my fucking. It was my top because I haven't been to that many. I guess it would be in my top five. So I've probably been to like five concerts. Dang, I feel. I thought you would have gone with me to some in college. Oh well, guess you missed out. Oh shit, Vince Staples. Oh yeah, I fell asleep during that one though. Oh my god, we gotta tell that story. That shit was funny. I don't remember it. I was asleep. <laughs> so literally. There's a Vince Staples concert. It's for free. It's at the FSU, like, student center. Me and my buddy, Javin, are not FSU students. Edward is at the time. So we're like, fuck it. We'll just go with Ed, and we'll go see Vince Staples for free. We get there. Ed, super blowed, finds a bench, lays down, falls asleep during the opening act, wakes up right before Vince Staples comes on, and leaves. <laughs> so he leaves, and me and Javin just stare. We watch Vince Stable, and then we got to meet Vince Stables at the end. And we was like, Ed, where the fuck are you? He was like, bro, I went home before he even came on the stage. <laughs> I was like, Ed, what the hell? It was, I went to, my first concert was in sync, which is weird, but my grandpa bought me in sync tickets. And when? we went to went in first grade. Oh. It was like for some reason my family had a lot of in sync albums laying around. And I just like got my hands on all of them and started listening to them. Cause it was like I mean, when it's compared to like Shania Twain. No, yeah. And like some time, real boy fine. music. Yeah. It's better than like when you have to listen to Shania Twain all the time, basically. A hundred percent. And like country wound up like buying me CDs when they came out and I'd like them. And I guess they probably were like trying to censor the music I listened to because I, pro I wasn't really exposed to like rap until who knows when, like fourth or fifth grade. So, and then I got Nelly. I got Nelly's, uh, um, what was it? There was Sweat and Suit. I got his Suit album. <laughs> and that album was the shit. That was the album with Tim McGraw on it. And I that's was how I was, say, yeah. That's how I convinced my mom to get it for me. I over think. and over again. Yeah, that song. <laughs> and, uh, but my first concert was in sync, then probably Elton. And then in college, this is what I really remember Asher Roth. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly, Mac Miller. I just went to all white rappers, I guess, in hindsight. Um, and those were the college concerts I went to. And then since being out here, I saw Black Bear and Mike Posner, which is kind of cool. Well, I'm, I'm trying to think. In St. Petersburg, I saw um, Kalia for like 10 minutes. You know who I saw and I wasn't impressed at all by? Who? G Easy and Logic. You saw them together? That's kind of weird. Yeah, that concert just sucked. The drinks were all like ten dollars. The only one I've been to that was outside was the T Pain one at the EWF homecoming, and I was like front row. That shit was fire. Well, I was I was just like Tallahassee hero and shit like that. Cause I mean, really, is, he hates man. Tallahassee. He hates Tallahassee because that's how Tallahassee treats him. Yeah, Tallahassee's not a good place, man. Tallahassee's a, a place of rude curmudgeons. Drinkers. That's really what Tallahassee is. It's a very big drinking town. And there's not much that goes on there otherwise. People don't really do much. They don't camp. They're not active. That's not in the culture. They're just, yeah. let's go drink and like try to fuck a hot girl.
Thanks for listening to the Bucks. Fucking kids. <laughs> God damn, man. You are fucking a wreck right now. Listen, thank you for listening to the Buckwoods episode two. Tune in to the next one. Ed, what you got to say? Nothing. Nothing. He meant to say like and subscribe. We'll be back soon with more issues. See, I just fucked those up again now. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> when I can, when what I can, was that? How did shut you the fuck that? up! Shut the fuck you up! You did a snake. Shut thing. the fuck up! When I do, when I count, I'm gonna go three, two, one. I'm gonna say thanks for listening to the Buckwood episode two, and you're gonna say, Nah, man, I don't live my life scripted. I do it all off the oh cuff. My fucking here God. we go. Thanks, guys, for listening to the Buckwood episode two. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. Do a do a that face and uh, tell your mama about us. Tell Good your night. mom, grandma, auntie, all that. Let's start with the mom. Always. <laughs>